This episode of the Go to Bed podcast is brought to you by Enduro Fest, May 4th at the Wild West Motorsports Park, just east of Sparks. If you hit the Mustang Ranch, you have gone too far, but not all is lost. You might want to stop in there too. And uh, this is an AMA Extreme Enduro event, so you know it's going to be sick. We've got Cody Webb, Ty Tremaine, Kyle Redman, and Destry Abbott. And we uh, we hear there's going to be some amateurs there, kids, and the pros. So, Moto guys, if you don't do off-road much, come try it out. And I've done this event a couple of years ago, and uh, it's gnarly. But, yeah, they're definitely racing for all types of uh, riders out there. So, give it a shot. May 4th, Sparks. Enduro Fest. Be there. Go to bed. But we're going to get unblocked. Sometimes you see him out there and he's just fucking asleep. Get a pillow, get a blanket. No, I'm not a fucking dirtbag. Go to bed. Tired. Good night. Go to bed. Ask me, dude. Dude, we're going to ask you honestly a lot about... The racing, probably. Hopefully I remember it, dude. It's been a long time. <laughs> what? Yo, what's going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Go to Bed. I'm your co-host, Fiki, joined with my co-host. <laughs> He's sleeping oh, already. Good morning. <laughs> it's JP. <laughs> Before we get too far into it, uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can go to go to bedpodcast.com and uh, there's links to everything on there as far as uh, support items and merch and all that shit. But today we're joined with a local moto legend, Nate Tierney. And uh, Nate's pretty much only known for moto and having a last name that no one can spell. That's true. So or other, say right. That's true. <laughs> other than that, <laughs> give, uh, give everyone your own introduction. Who are you? Why'd you come over? Et cetera. Um, Nate Tierney. Uh, I'm fucking 37 years old. Damn, and, dude. Yeah, dude. Just, <laughs> just, a fucking wall. just turned just turned thirty seven on the sixteenth. <laughs> but uh yeah, I figured I'd cruise over and see what's up. Yeah, so Nate actually DM'd me on Instagram and said he wanted to lick my stomach <laughs> <laughs> on some post. And I was like, you know what? We need to get him on the podcast. Yeah. He'd be good. That's a good that's application. That's the worst right thing there. I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Set horrible DM. For Unfollowed you. after you asked. <laughs> He's like, look this yeah. block. Yeah, and then uh, I didn't know he was a fucking professional mountain biker, too. And I yeah. showed up mountain biking for my first time in three years mm -hmm. and uh he was out there with his chick matching bikes and everything yeah you get matching bikes when you get old and uh i can't wait for that day dude yeah that is a thing matching bikes yeah, but is. usually it's it like is. matching fucking huffies from yeah, Walmart, right? or something. yeah you got the scott what is it called it's a oh, uh, ransom yeah it's the ransom yeah scott ransoms you and your chick were ripping yep. out there that yeah. just saved my whole life to get those bikes so Dude, they're expensive. Huh? Worst stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she was ripping too. Like you said, she was hitting those drops. I, I wasn't expecting that. And honestly, I was a little nervous she was gonna go down. She does. She she does all right, man. She grew up uh, racing dirt bikes and riding dirt bikes. And uh, there's sometimes I gotta tell her to relax. You know. Yeah. It's kind of scary bringing her sometimes, <laughs> but uh, she's she, from here. She gets through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, she grew up here in Reno, oh, okay. went to college in in LA, and now she's back. So she, when you were in your prime, you were like, I, like I'm, I'm looking at it, but I'm just gonna save that till when I'm like retired, you know, like that's <laughs> yeah. a keeper. I'm it, a, that's yeah. We've known like. each other for quite a while, and then um, we hooked up a while, you know, however many years it was ago, and and um, kind of hooked up a few times, and then she went back to LA, and when she came back. I saw her again, and we started hanging out pretty yeah. much after that. Riding and stuff, or no? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'd ride and go over the hill to Hanktown or whatever. and That's sick, it. dude. Do you still yeah. ride? Yeah, I tried to. Uh, you tried don't to? Don't insult him like that. I tried to ride. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him out there pedaling. Last time I saw him, it was Carson Raceway. Dude. No, I still got a bike. I just... Uh, the Kiwi Car Care bike? Yeah, Kiwi Damn, Car. Dude. He's still taking care of things, and... Uh, Helps my old ass get to the races here and there, and but yeah, I need to start riding a little more. 
Yeah, don't than we I, all? Then I do. Yeah. Hey, what's your number one memory of Nate when you were little? Oh, man. Here we Dude, go. Dude, it's in my room right now. It's hanging next to my desk. You at Arena Cross. What happened? Just a sick picture of you hitting the catapult. And I was like, Nate, I need you to sign this. Like, Really? Yeah, it says two junior from Nate. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Dude. How does that feel that a 24 year old grown man has a fucking photo of you? <laughs> that's awesome. Into- <laughs> yeah, you can- I'm probably the only one. That's, dude. that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's hanging right next to Conway's, dude. And yeah. Mason's, Biden's yeah. up there. I, I support. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I, don't, my- I think you should move it. I don't really like Conway, but. Do we, mean, does anyone? I yeah. actually have a Pit Viper sticker over his face, so it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of Conway, I was just thinking, like, and I'm sure he got it from you, but you, Conway, Fish, whoever else, all talk exactly the same. Like, all, I don't know what it is. I'm sure I kind of talk like that, too. It's just it's, moto talk. But I think we like, all do. Yeah. Dude, I don't know what you're talking funny, about, though. but. I know what you're talking about. It's like. <laughs> It's you can't pinpoint it, but if you had them all together on a show, you would be able to notice it. Like, dude, yeah, if right. you if you shut your eyes and imagine a pair of white Oakley gas cans and Nate talking, you'd be like, "Oh, that's Conway." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some bleach tips on the hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm glad he gave that up. When did you first yeah. meet Conway or Dennis? Who'd you meet first? Oh man, dude, Dennis. Uh... Dennis used to help out my brother be- before me. Well, and that was when he actually taught me how to step on, step off, dude. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, Dennis, uh, Dennis helped my brother, and Adam was, he was a young kid. He was like probably, I think, maybe six, seven at the time and just was getting into racing, I think, or maybe even riding. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I probably met Adam. I was, I don't know. Maybe 12, 13 or something. Dang. But yeah, we've known them for quite a while. Yeah. that's. Did your dad race or something? Like, how do you know Dennis? No, I think, uh, you know what? I don't know off the top of my head how they knew each other. I think just being in Carson. Yeah. Somehow we all kind of met going to the races and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Probably met through Mike Baxter or something. That that guy. That dude. guy, yeah. He's out of <laughs> that control. Gnarly, dude. <laughs> yeah. He's crazy. He's a Carson legend. Yeah. He- <laughs> So give us the backstory on your racing career and also Justin's career, because I don't really know anything about it, but I know that he was badass too. Yeah. Uh shit, man. We um my brother, uh I, I don't know, I would say started racing seven or eight, you know, six somewhere around there, kind of my my age too. Mm-hmm. And um I remember my dad saying I wasn't really even into it. I got a quad like when I was pretty young. It uh, actually explains and, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wasn't into it for a while. And then I, I out of nowhere, I kind of started getting into it and just racing at um, Silver State every weekend. And um, same with my brother. I mean, we just both started getting, well, he was always ahead of me and, you know, bigger bikes and stuff like that. But uh, just started, you know, getting pretty serious with it, racing here and then going over the hill a lot. And, um, you know, my brother, he, I think he went pro 16, something like that, 16, 17. Dang. And, um, and, uh, started racing outdoors and got hooked up with Jim Hawley and like Rob Anson and all those guys. And, um, just fucking went from there. No the way. Same with he me. knows Jim Hawley in that. Yeah, we they all were kind of at the Carson track a lot back in the day when we Jim were all. Holly? Yeah, because he's he's kind of related to Hanson to Robert, mm-hmm. and um, they kind of took notice of Justin, and then you know from there it just it blew up pretty good. Whoa! Was he ever on a team or anything? Or Justin? Yeah. Um, I don't think he was on a team, but he did get a national number. He yeah. had a national uh, eighty-seven. For a while, fuck, he was racing with McGrath and all those guys and yeah. racing outdoor. I think he raced Supercross a few times, and um, he was more of an outdoor guy. I and know. you were kind of more of an indoor guy, right? Well, yeah, I kind of like both. I just raced both because, shit, I grew up, you know, I I also turned pro. I think I was just getting out of high school or in high school. And um, I know as soon as I got 
here as soon as I graduated, I took off, started doing arena cross mm. and traveling the country. And pretty much from there, it was supercross and outdoor. So when you were doing that, were you privateer? Supercross stuff? And uh, arena cross. Yeah. there I was on a few teams for arena cross. They weren't like, some of them weren't, you know, they weren't the big teams that you see now, but, you know, they, they got us to the races and took our bikes. and So you, they paid for that part? Yeah. Did you make money? Yeah, arena cross, you made good money. Um, shit, when I was doing it, it was 125 and 250 two strokes. Yeah, old dude. school, dude. Crazy. And I mean, and then eventually it was it was you know four strokes, but um, you could always make good money, you know, however you did in the main, and then they always threw like a jump show in, and that's where Mason would compete and race, huh? Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, that's days. where Mason yeah. kicked yeah. off the freestyle stuff, yeah, dude. He, did, he started yeah. killing it and. He would need to do it over the finish, and then yeah. they were like, well, let's bring a ramp and land on the finish, huh? Yeah. It would, like, jump sideways, I think. And, yeah. like, you would go from the side of the cap, or right, and, yeah. like, land, and then have to make the corner. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's kind of where it all started for those guys. And, uh, but, yeah, I think crazy. that's, uh, that's kind of it, you know? So how much would you make on, like, a, if you did okay on an average race? Like, uh... I don't know. You, it was always Friday, Saturday night. And then, um, I don't know, man, if you race both classes and you were top five, top three, you could easily make a, a grand a night, you know? Mm. That's not bad. And then jump show was always like, you know, 200 bucks or whatever it was to win. What would, but, um, well, I, I forget, like, what was, and there was a competition, was it best trick or something pretty much? or um, Jump show? It was just a jump show. I mean, kind of. Whatever you could do, heel clicker back then, or nil, or uh, knack knack, or just whip and hmm. whip it as fucking hard as you could over yeah. a 40, 50 foot catapult and wad up and throw your hands up <laughs> if you had to and exactly. do the kitty bell or do the kitty bell and fucking, you know. Yeah, but, Bell was racing it back then too. Right? Yeah, all of us did. Yeah. Mason and uh, Brian Foster, Kenny, me. Blair. I mean, that was, yeah, Blair, all those guys. That's kind of what we what got us started you know i yeah. think that was one of the best things that that got me good enough to do supercross and mm -hmm. get you ready for it you know it's crazy there's no more arena cross it's there is well like a smaller one but yeah. not like the road to yeah supercross. it's i don't think it's nothing <clears throat> like it was back in the day we all had so much fun you know after the races you'd go out and go to the bar or hang out and yeah you know everybody was pretty pretty pumped up to race and then go have fun and you know drive to the next round yeah now you know it was that. a huge deal back then i'm kind of bummed that i missed it because i didn't even start riding until i was like 15 so right. i got into it that was in like 05 06 when tons of people that i know now were like getting out of it and then they came back later right so i started when like everyone was quitting yeah so i wasn't around back then but i remember it was a huge deal like Reno Arena Cross, just even from a spectator oh, yeah, standpoint, dude. compared to what it was like the last few years, it's like no one even fucking cares anymore. Yeah, yeah. they don't promote it, it like they to used to. So and shit. Cool, yeah. That was Hanson, dude. The, yeah. He was the guy, man. He was the guy that made it fun, and you know, you'd always have guys over the hill and just good racing. You know, Tyler Evans, all those guys would always show up and just hammer each other. Yeah, yeah. we're watching and. Yeah, dude, it's fucking sketchy. Even the best race to spectate is fucking Sunday, amateur day, 450 yeah. beginner, dude. Yeah. So funny at Arena Cross. <laughs> Worse than Fernley. But. Yeah, that's my <laughs> class, dude. Yeah. That'd be my no, class. No, dude, you're 250. Oh, no, you got a board kit, so you have to ride 450. You, don't you have might to. get protested, dude. They don't know. Yeah, easy. <laughs> dude, we would, when I was actually uh, racing Arena Cross, it was little Travi Ham. He was my mechanic for, I think, two of the seasons that we did and um dude kenny bell actually went on the road with me and helped me out but we would always stay sunday because we knew all the track guys all the track crew and uh we'd fuck put our put the headsets on and shit and help sunday and watch and it was chaos but you could always hear people talking <laughs> shit and like yeah you know That's tell sick. you to watch your back because there's someone looping out through the woods <laughs> and going oh, across the starting line or something and uh dude but yeah it was fun to it was always fun to do that, and did yeah, uh, the good one, old days. My best friend Jake bought. I think you, you know Travis Keen, right? 
Maybe not, but he's, I don't know. He, Timo's, Sounds familiar. Timo's buddy. He lives on that same property that Timo lives on. Okay. But uh, he bought, I don't know if he bought it from you. I assumed he did, but he bought one of your old arena cross bikes. It was a 04 RMZ 250F. Okay. And uh, and then my best Dang. friend bought it from him. Holy shit. Yeah. And so he rode that bike forever, but I think you had like the tranny re-geared on it or something like no matter what sprockets he put on that bike <laughs> dude he was riding it at like mustang this one we were like 250 beginner and he'd be on the fucking back straight away just wrapped out just ah oh, fifth gear and it was like not moving because it's set up for indoors Fuck. yeah it was crazy yeah that's secret shit right there we kept out. <laughs> yeah i don't no, know I what was up with that anything. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah dude that's wild i didn't even know you could fucking do that to a bike I don't know. I don't. I never did anything to the transmission. Maybe it's just. I don't know what it was, but yeah, maybe it was stuck in third. Dude. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was Lane. <laughs> that was Lane doing something. Yeah, <laughs> Lane fucking secret work. Did he? Does he help you out, or did he help you out, or? Uh, he he's always helped me out pretty much through all my riding. You know, oh, really, cool. my career, whether whatever bike I was on, he'd always you know if he was at the Supercross or outdoor, he'd always come up and. You know, sometimes hook me up with a tire or just oh, nice. anything that he could help with. He is always really cool. That's Still to this day, he gives me shit every time I see him and gives me a hard time, but yeah, I know he likes me. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is, dude. That's how everyone in moto is. Yeah. All we do is talk shit to each other. Like I yeah. grew up and like Lane was like the guy around here to connect the dots between like, like sick pipes or cool tires or yeah. like. Like X games with biting and shit, and then also be like at friendly riding practice day, yeah. and you're like, dude, that guy's sick, huh? And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, I hear about him, but like he's kind of squirrely out there. At the same time, <laughs> he's like, a guy, dude. He yeah. fucking knows everybody. <laughs> he does, yeah. dude. He knows every hookup. Yeah, and, but yeah, That's and so he started cool. Team Clueless, dude. I don't know if he he's what in it, but. Every time I post a, a story of you or Neil or even me doing, he always he DMs me and says hashtag Team Clueless. Like that's our squad. Oh yeah. So I don't know if he's like the master or if it's just <laughs> us. But, Honestly, but Lane, Clueless. if you're listening and you want to pay for all of us to get tattooed Team Clueless, I'd do it. Well, you got one. So <laughs> <laughs> damn it, dude. Damn it, man. I think my fit. Yeah, I got a couple old school tattoos. Okay. Damn, dude. Of what? Dude, Rocket? I have the fucking, the tramp stamp last name on the back. Okay. Dude, you guys never seen I've me seen take that. my jersey I've up at the that. track? I've seen that, yeah. And then I just, I have like a half sleeve of my arm that I got when I was like fucking 17 or something. And no more? That's it, man. I'm glad I didn't get any more. What? <laughs> I'm trying to I, get him. I almost <laughs> think that I want to get some more and then I, I just start thinking about it. I'm like, fuck, man. Do I really want more? You should get that picture I have hanging in my room on your back. Okay. Above your last name. Just a thought, throwing it out there. You can do that. Yeah. I need to add something to the back so it doesn't look like I have like a tramp stamp. Yeah, it would flow with that. Dude, and I started, I did that shit because of Deegan and like, yeah, I was going to say, my brother did it. Tim O'Brien had it. Biden had it. Kenny Lash. Oh, dude, we need to get Tim O'Brien on the show. I didn't even think All these guys had it, dude. And I was like, that's bitching, you know, back (laughs) back in the day. Yeah, (laughs) you didn't, no one said tramp stamp. So it was like, yeah, I thought the same thing. I always like, get shit for it. I always thought, like, when I was, like, 12, 10, I'm like, dude, when I am 18, I'm getting my last name. Like, the like the sick dudes. Like <laughs> you, you didn't know? do it, did you? No. Like, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, once I hit 16, it was like, Deegan was, like, barely, like, he has fake teeth now. You know, you're like, what? I'm not doing <laughs> That's that. not the general. Yeah. <laughs> that dude's got the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, you got yeah, fucking family up your side. Yeah, family, I got this. Dude. There you go. Family forever, dude. Yeah, you got a fucking hole in your thing, too, there. Yeah, dude, I got shot, dude. It went right through me. You did not. It went, do you want to see? <laughs> did you? Really? I got shot. It lit up, dude. Nine, I think it was 96 in Vegas when Pac died. <laughs> Look at this hole, dude. <laughs> what see, really the, happened? Dude, Glock 9. <laughs> did Glock, he really? No. no. I was sad at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's no? a premature baby. Yeah, he dude. said, yeah, you should have went with it. Oh, you did say yeah. that? You've yeah, been the earliest was... guy. Damn, dude. I Did I have you? Yeah. You, you should have kept going with it. Dang. I've tried that before the in high school. The whole Vegas Pac thing kind of. I don't know if he died in 96, but that was my guess. I think it was somewhere around there. But honestly, I was. I had a, I have a heart murmur, and I was full. I had like oh. six, like 
ounces of water or something in me. I was like almost dead. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up. I'm glad I gave you a a signature, (laughs) you know? Dude, honestly, when I get like <laughs> editing block, yeah. Yeah, that's like this, as soon as you deny someone, you're like running out the building, Nate, Nate. And you're like, no, I can't. And then you get blown up today on social media. It's like my premature baby is fucking <laughs> <laughs> fought through and battled. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's now 11 years old. They said he wouldn't live. Nate yeah. wouldn't give him an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> and this condition's getting worse since. Yeah. <laughs> God. Like, having complications. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it was kind well, of. I'm early. glad you're still with us, man. Dude, me too. Yeah, just be me and Feeks doing this shit if you weren't. <laughs> Seriously, I did. Wow, there'd be a lot of shit just still going on and me not here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't. We probably wouldn't live here if I wasn't alive. I guarantee you that. Yeah, that's right. Same with you or you, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, dude. So. One thing that I never get, like you have tons of natural ability on a bike. Like I remember you were hurt at one point. I forget what year, but you were out for like six months and you came back like you didn't take a day off. You probably my favorite memory of you is when I was racing 450 intermediate at Fernley and you showed up for the pro class, missed practice, didn't ride practice, line up on the gate, whole shot, walk away from everyone. You know, first lap, haven't seen the track yet. And I've did it back then I was riding like four or five days a week. And that's like what it <laughs> what it took for me to feel comfortable on the bike. Like you right? practice and just go till the gas went out. Right? Yeah. I would do motos at the fucking rancho sand pits until I ran out of gas, fifty five yeah. minutes. And but as soon as like I take a couple days off or a week or two weeks, dude, I'm just yeah. trash. So right. like I don't know. It just comes naturally to you, but like, what what did it take to get to that level? Were you just steadily progressing all the time, or were you a squid for a long time and then it just clicked? Or I what? don't know, man. I think um, I, I we were so serious racing. I mean, I was why all the my high school buddies were going to parties. We were going over the hill to race, you know, and and my dad was. Um, I mean, he wasn't a dick about stuff, but he was pretty serious, like growing up if you know i mean that was our goal is to to fucking kick some ass at racing and so i remember we were going practicing all the time pretty much every day after school we'd go ride like deer run or prison hill shit like that Mm -hmm. or indian hills stuff like that and i don't know i don't know how i could do that you know i kind of know like when i go nowadays it's it's a little different but i think uh I think just riding, growing up racing and riding and racing big races and going over the hill and, you know, all the shit I did, I think I just, I don't know, it's had to be some confidence maybe and maybe getting lucky here and there, but I don't know. And you're notorious rumors for not, (laughs) like a rumor, because I don't know if it's true, but I'm about to find out, for like never training. Yeah. Like it's all you did was ride, but no gym stuff. Yeah, I mean, I... I never, I mean, I, I would train here and there. I trained more as I got older, I think, mm-hmm. as far as like road bike stuff, but I was never as serious as I should have been, you know? My dad always would tell me, hey, you know, like, what are you doing? Why aren't you out riding or why aren't you training or stuff like that? And when you're, I think when you're young, you kind of just blow it off, like, no, I'm good, you know, I'll just ride or whatever. But there's times that I regret that I didn't train harder or stuff like that, you know, to, you know, I could have been maybe on a team, a, a good factory team. Who knows? You know, it's harder in hell to get on those. But yeah, but yeah, it's. Uh, I would I would train, but I think more I would just ride. You know, I think it's different too because like <clears throat> Carmichael set that <clears throat> tone. Like before that, Emig and them would be going out the night after, mm-hmm. and not really like. <laughs> Yeah. Blown like McGrath blew people's doors off, but not like Carmichael came through like fit, like ripping, like new, new, you know? Yeah. That's, I think more in my era, it was almost just guys more just rode, I think. Mm-hmm. Like they maybe trained, but it wasn't like today, you know? Right. Like the guys trained, are nuts now. Dude. Like, you know, you got full trainers for it, for every guy, for little kids. It's just, it's yeah. to a different level now. Yeah. We were just talking about on the last episode with Sam. Um, 
like the amateur stuff, how these kids are 10 years old, factory ride, yeah, getting nuts. paid to ride, semis at the races and shit. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's cool that they're doing that because it's going to be some good racing when we're – or when I'm old yeah, and I get to watch. But it's – um, yeah, it's a whole nother level of just the sport, you know, progressing and – you know, yeah, it's 65, it 80 be. kids are making a couple hundred thousand a year and they're, you know, <laughs> sponsored by Monster or Red yeah. Bull. And it's just, it's insane. Yeah, that is so crazy. What, so when you were like doing good on Arena Cross and it's doing pretty like good here locally on Supercross, what like, or actually what, when you were go, growing up, about to do arena cross what were the was there teams like there are today for like the like there had to have been like the like emig maybe or like when you're like going did you ever go to loretta's or National's? yeah i went to loretta's once um i didn't do so hot there i got like like a seventh i think was my best moto mm -hmm. you know and one of the motos i was running i think fourth or something i went down couldn't get the bike started dad was fucking pissed i remember and um I remember it came down, there was whatever, three motos for the whole week or whatever the schedule was. But I remember we were so far away from getting a good position. We, My dad was, just, we were just like, fuck it, let's just go home. Yeah. You know? Who it was, was just me and my then? dad. What's that? Who was the guy then, like the one winning? Ah, uh, fuck, who was it, man? Um, can't even remember right now. Um any, like I know, I know when. Um, shit, man, I can't even think of who was doing that. My brother went a, a year too when I was when I was young. I wasn't even racing, but I remember when my brother went. Stuart was like, shit, he was like four years old. Oh, really? He was racing the PW class or whatever. How old he was? Yeah. Whoa. So that that just shows you how long ago that was. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think it was like this kid Gene Stoll. Um, he's like a Suzuki rider. I know um, some of the guys that I, you know, that I kind of grew up racing with. I'm trying to remember all their names, but fucking getting old, man. I don't even remember those guys. You know, like any chance? Like I know, like Reed and Stewart and Carmichael, but like that's like Carmichael. The I think when I was was there, he was on 80s. I think. Somewhere right around there. And you were there on 80s? I was on like 125. Oh, okay. But yeah, those guys were like, you know, gnarly back then too. That's what's yeah. crazy. Like the kids today that are gnarly, like Ryder Ellis at 50 Ryder. Yeah. Jumping everything at the A2 amateur race. Yeah, on it's 50, insane. When he's, say, even in the 250 class on a factory team, dude, he's going to be so good. Like, yeah. That's hard to say to though, because we were saying that last episode too about like Cincerello. Like we really haven't had since who was the last one? Stewart that was like a total phenom as an amateur, and Ooh. then lived up to it in both classes. Maybe he's still yeah. Photo. yeah, yeah. But um, like Cincerello was supposed to be that guy, right? And he was hyped as a kid, super good, and then he turned pro, and obviously he's still. Rips yeah. and now he's the top guy, but it's taken him years for whatever reason, injuries and, mm -hmm. and other stuff too, to to become the top guy. Like he didn't hop right into the class and right. start ripping. Fuck, so, there's so many there's so many good guys that yeah. come out of the amateur ranks that are fuck man, they get a super cross ride and they're right there top five. It seems like there's less and less guys that are like sixteen, boom, you're in supercross. Right. Like March Banks was, I think. But other than him, it seems like there's a lot of guys that are like 18 and then they're yeah. rookies and stuff. Right. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. interesting. You'd think it'd be going the other way where there's tons of guys that are ready right at 16. But yeah. maybe they know, like we found out with Cooper Webb, we waited one more year and he yeah, was fast. I'm sure. Was 16. They probably yeah. are like ready, but they don't want to get him in there too soon. And it's the same thing with, um, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say right there. Something about that, but um, I'll think of it later. But, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So for you, Nate, what was your number one where you're like, that was like the sickest race. Like I crushed it or like, like I beat fucking this person. Uh, Cause you know, Conway always drops Oh, it. dude, Conway fucking two. I can name it, dude. It's a <laughs> 250B heat two at Mammoth where I fucking beat Kyle Regal straight up. That's Conway's peak right there. Yeah, man. that's it. <laughs> Fuck, man. Um. I, I won a, I got to win, a, or I won a last chance in San Francisco. Oh, I was there, dude, with my dad. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But um, I don't know, you know, I'm the guy that, I don't really toot my own horn, you know. I, a lot of guys come up and will say shit to me and, oh, dude, you were bad. And I just, I don't know. I don't really think like that, you know. Because it's you, yeah. I just, I'm just a normal guy that, but. I would say probably that because that was pretty cool. That was sick, dude. Um, My dad was got that what year was that? Like twenty eleven. That was, that was cool because the first Maybe the uh, the first heat race I was racing with Mike Young, and the fucking guy took me out, dude. I was in qualifying <laughs> out of the first heat, and I was, I mean, to make it out of the heat, I think is better than making it out of the last chance for sure. And um, I remember I was so bombed out that Mike Young took me out. You know, took me out of the whatever the qualifying. qualifying and uh remember i was at the motorhome with my dad and we were bummed out you know because usually when you go to the last chance it's pretty tough yeah. it's like top two guys yeah crazy and uh i remember uh chris mcavoy came up to me and and gave me you know gave me some words of wisdom and just said hey you, you know you got this and blah 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 and but i went out there and um i remember i was battling or i got a i think pretty decent start and I was battling with the guy in third or something past him. And then I was like at the chance to pass the guy in first. And I got that guy and then I won. And it was like, wow, fuck. Damn. Just, you know, I won the last chance, which is pretty cool. But I don't know, myself, I would have rather been, it would have been way cooler to get like a top 10 or something, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I'd probably say that, you know? Yeah. I rem- my dad's got a f- old film photo of, it's, it says, LCQ winner, Nate Tierney. Yeah, I got some pictures of that. So sick, I forget who dude. took them, but... Probably my dad. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Senior's biggest fan, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, what's it like being on the track with those guys? Oh, fuck. It's pretty... It's... I don't know. When you're on the line, I don't think about that. Because, mm. I mean, you. I mean, obviously, you look up to those guys... If you're on the line with them or not, you know they're bad dudes, and you grew up watching those guys or whoever it was. But um, it's I would say it's cool, you know. Mm-hmm. I just I never thought like, oh shit, I'm next to you know, whatever factory guys next to me on the gate. Mm-hmm. I just was thinking, shit, I just want to get a good start and yeah, and try to do something here instead of just going, oh yeah, I got you know whatever it is in the last chance or in the main or whatever. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Now that I look at it, it's pretty cool. It's crazy. It's, it's uh, exciting, but it, it's more, I think I was more concentrated on just making it through. Cause it's gnarly when you, when they, everyone takes off and everyone's hitting triples in front of you and you're up in the air and you're hitting whoops and everyone's right there. It's, it's a gnarly feeling, you know? Yeah. It's way different than like an outdoor race, yeah, you know. And you got the crowd and everyone's fucking screaming. And I yeah. know what you mean, dude. In I mean, they're not screaming at the one seven three, but it's <laughs> it's gnarly. They're still screaming, and you yeah. hear it, yeah, yeah. And you can hear it, and you're just it's you're just. I I think I was just more stoked to get in the night show every pretty much every round that I went to. I'd make the night show, so I got pretty comfy of being in the main. Wait, can you say but, that one more time? What? Every night you make the night show. Yeah, do you hear that, Adam? (laughs) (laughs) Poor Adam. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, But you know, fuck. I I I went there to fucking make the night show. I didn't want to go qualify your ass off and then you know not make it. That's that. I hated going and sitting in the stands. I would have rather fucking went home. Right. You know. It's weird that you're in the stands and you got your pass on. You're like, yeah, you know, I was out there earlier, but I didn't make it. That shit was (laughs) pissed me off, you know? Yeah. So, well, dude, that's wild to see. Like, well, how often did you make mains? I think I made, um, 
I don't know how many mains. I know I probably made a like probably a handful of 250 mains or lights mains, a couple back east. Um, I made Daytona a few times on lights, I think, and then like 450. Um, probably the same. Maybe yeah. you know, maybe five ten mains or something. Maybe That's a little it, less than that. It. But you know, I never. No, probably not ten. Probably not that many, but um, at least five, six, something around there. Yeah. But I think the best I ever did in a main was like 16th or something, yeah. which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only 20 guys, but after that night yeah. was over, I'm like, fuck, I got 16th, you well, know? Dude, that, I want to get better in that. Yeah. Well, that's what but, I was going to say, too, because like when you know when you I'm just watch on TV or even when you're there. What, but, what's that? I, I was probably just being too hard on myself, but... Oh. I don't know. I guess that's pretty cool. Well, like when you watch on TV and you watch the main, you see the guy in 16th getting lapped. Yeah. And then, but what you don't realize is there were 40 guys that qualified right. for the night show. Yeah. 20 of those guys didn't make it. And then there was another, what, 20, 30, 40 guys sometimes that didn't even make the night show. Yeah. And all of those guys, if you show up at the local track, they'll fucking smoke anyone that's yeah, there dude. yeah that's what's crazy is the different for sure. level like you conway harvey any of the guys simino that were qualifying for supercross like Crossing how here. how fast the guys who win are oh yeah dude, it's crazy it's not like you think you're riding good and you know i remember like um you know like the the night show being in taken off or whatever and having like Villapoto or Reed guys like that, you know, I, every night show I had to race against those fucking guys, you know? Yeah. And it, uh, like you said, getting lapped by him, you're like, dude, <laughs> this is gnarly. You know, you're like, yeah. I'm, I'm doing most of the rhythms. I'm hitting the whoops good. And they're just, they just go by you. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Well, I remember, I think it was in San Fran. I was there watching qualifying and dude, this is when Adam had fucking everything PC you could buy on the bike, right? Like <laughs> yeah, full yeah. shit. Like his shit was sick. And he would come around and well, you guys both know how sick his bikes were. He would come around and there was a triple right out of a left. And he would just rip the corner. Whoa! And this was on a 250. All right. And just like bike sounds good, you know, but would barely make it over. And then you see Right. Like Hanson, when he was on pro circuit, would come around and he's standing up in the corner yep. and just goes, bah, 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 yeah. and clears it no problem. I'm like, dude, those things Probably are coming out of the crazy. turn also in like third. Yeah. You know, badass transmissions and shit. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's what yeah. I, I never realized until that moment how gnarly <laughs> one those guys are and two, how gnarly their bikes are compared to shit you can buy. I got a good story about uh Daniel Blair when he got on that Geico team a while ago and he mm-hmm. did really good. Oh, yeah. He was telling me that um I was I was asking him the same thing because not everyone gets to ride factory bikes and mm-hmm. and uh I asked him how the bike was and stuff and he's like, you know, suspension so so he goes, it's it's good, but you know whatever but he said the motor and the transmission was like so gnarly that it was it was crazy he's like i could go fifth gear through the whoops if i had to you know like come out of the corner and third switch to fourth and easily go through gnarly whoops you know Mm -hmm. and he said he said it was it was the bike was so fast it was the 250f yeah he said it was so fast they had he had to have them tone it down like dude why (laughs) How the fuck can you tone a 250 down? Yeah. <laughs> you know, usually, yeah. like you said, a privateer bike, you're, you're Everything you know, you struggling for some of those mm-hmm. triples out of the corner or whatever it is. And uh, I remember him saying that they were gnarly. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. So, you know, they got cool shit. You still yeah. talk to him? Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still give him shit for taking me out at Red Bluff, dude. We were, really? <laughs> I was winning the main event, dude. And, uh, he um, fucking jumped. He did something squirrely behind me. He was in second, and uh, I think it was a, re- a red flag. We had to restart or something. But uh, he fucking jumped on the inside of me and like kind of like landed on the side of me and took me out. And I remember as we were both going down, he's like, sorry, Nate, I'm sorry, Nate. And we fucking wad up, and 
the fucker took my main event win, dude. Oh. But uh, I always give him shit for that. But but yeah, we we are we're good buddies. We've went to Mexico so many times, and he's a good dude. Mexico, you used to race, race there? right? Yeah, yeah, dude. I was, I was freaking shaggy, dude. I was a what? Mexico fucking guy for a while. Um, met this guy uh, Juan. Uh, obviously a Mexican <laughs> and uh, I met him at Red Bluff and he's like dude um, I forget the first crew it was that went down I think it was Eric Nye um, me Daniel I think uh, Vince went Daniel's brother and um, dude just kicked it off from there kept going to Mexico and all these different places like the sketchiest fucking places you know you're out in the middle of nowhere going through fucking checkpoints with guys pointing guns at you and no way. yeah it was gnarly i mean nothing ever was sketchy enough to you know to happen but uh went to mexico probably at least 15 20 times it's over sketchy. over you know over the years and then uh <clears throat> but yeah that was those were fun trips dude mexico is a weird place i went there when i was like 11 once took a taxi to like some shopping area with my dad and this taxi was ripping bro like yeah from, from, from through traffic and yeah. I'm, I'm like bro and he's like ah, on the phone with someone else ah, no ah. rules dude Th- there isn't huh there's nothing yeah there was like a half body guy yeah. on the street it was scarf a lot of dude like what? from the crawl out of the store yeah. so dude, yeah, driving yeah. The taxi. I see it I see a lady like that dude that's common dude that's gnarly I saw an accident. We're at a stoplight. Me and Juan, uh, we're at a stoplight. A guy's getting ready to turn right. The guy that comes ripping by us just fucking slams the back of him, pushes the car out in the middle of the intersection, and then just takes off. <laughs> the fucking ladies. <laughs> wasn't the first time that happened. Yeah. Today. I'm like, Juan, what's up with that? And he's like, no, it's Mexico, Nate. That's what happens. <laughs> I'm like, fucking no stopping, no insurance. Like, he's, 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 he's like, no. Mesa, dude. He's like, he's probably drinking. <laughs> he fucking took off. And I was like, wow, this so is. So, did they have a big purse down there? Is that why you kept going? Yeah. The um, the promoters would hook us up with, uh, with show up money, whatever it was, like 1500 bucks, 1200 bucks to show up. And, um, Dude, when we first, like the first few years we went, we got bikes to ride and they were roaches, dude. Yeah, sketchy. Like sketchy bikes. Yeah, fuck that. I remember the bike that I had, just checking over bolts. <laughs> Everything was loose. Spokes were loose. <laughs> just dead. Yeah, they rides, probably did dude. that on purpose. Like yeah. they do with the Baja and set booby traps and shit. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, you would, you would win. I forget how many they paid in pesos, but it was, you know, six, 700 bucks or something like that. And then you get your, your show up money and, Promoters would take care of everything as far as hotels and stuff Sweet. like that. But, um, you know, flights and, but, um, it was fun, man. It was a lot of gnarly shit and went to a couple really sketchy spots to race and uh, made it through. Anything it. crazy happened down there? Like where you were like, ah, oh, fuck, anything? man. It was always crazy. There was always something that you like would remember on the way home. You know, like we never got like you know held up or anything oh, stupid cool. like that. But um, just Mexico's gnarly, man. It is, dude. Anywhere you go, whether it's the beaches or me amigos, vatos are super crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> dude, I always wonder like why more pros don't show up at local stuff. I know back <clears throat> in the heyday there was a lot, but even right now. For guys that can easily win, like why not just show up and make some? I don't money? get it. I, same thing. Yeah, it's their it's their ego, dude. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm gonna fucking say this now because there's a lot of pros around here, like you just said, that don't want to get beat by somebody, right? Beat by the other pros. Beat by the other guy. It's yeah. like I give a lot of respect to all these young kids that are coming up around here. Like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of their names, but. Um, Sanchez. Well, yeah, I've, I've always been buddies with Sanchez, but like, um, uh, like Galette or Galetti is that Galliet, Galliet, yeah, yeah, however you say his last oh. name. But um, I got a lot of respect for that kid. He's been riding for a long time, and out of nowhere, dude, I show up to Fernley, not to race, but to practice, you know. And and like you said, probably haven't just showed up, haven't rode for a while, and out there ripping, and 
guy just fucking rips right by me, dude. Yeah. Like, just flies by me. Launches 100 feet off of a fucking Fernley tabletop, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whips it, you know? I'm like, holy shit. So I think, I think some of these guys, like, you know, in my era, well, a lot of those guys don't race anymore, but mm-hmm. I think they're scared to get beat. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, dude, just respect it that – Dude, well, there's young kids thinking, that are better than you now. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you were the way that it goes. <laughs> yeah, even in like in Southern California, you have to figure these guys that are out there at that level where they're like barely making the night show at mm-hmm. Supercross, and they're traveling all over just trying to make night shows. But in Southern California, you could race definitely two days a week, yeah, every week, or maybe even more. Right. Like, why don't they, they could just stay within an hour and race twice a week and probably make more money than trying to fucking qualify for Supercross when you're like not even close. Well, yeah, that's like fairground races when they used to have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I remember like Jeff Willow, dude, he was the king of those. Mm -hmm. You guys remember Jeff Willow? Mm -mm. He was like my brother's era, like Tyler Evans, those, those type of guys, you Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. that fucking guy would go to every fairground race he could go to yeah and he would always do good and he'd always make good money yeah. you know ten thousand dollar purse here or five thousand purse here or head over to idaho or you know it seems like it would honestly be like money. more fun to do that especially yeah. if you were badass because it's kind of like showing up to a local race where you know that you're gonna fucking smoke everyone and you're the man when you show up there right. you might as well show up and collect your paycheck instead of going and getting smoked yeah. just trying to like say oh i fucking did supercross you that's know? probably why that's why yeah. i'm thinking like they probably go to supercross and nationals because just well, so they can say oh yeah i rode supercross yeah well, I'm did supercross you fucking make guy. the main or did you make the show yeah adam no i got <laughs> you guys are back at adam dude. <laughs> is he gonna listen to this yeah, yeah. Gonna listen. i hope yeah. he does adam dude i got your back dude <laughs> He knows uh, we're kidding, but it's the hard truth. It's fucking hard, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's tough, man. And you know what I'll say about Adam? Is uh, when I was staying down there with him, we'd go to Hughes' track and like all these practice tracks that privateer guys like us could go ride. And I remember he would fucking ride so good, you know? We'd put in motos, he'd ride good, and we'd help each other and we'd do this. and, And then he would show up to the Anaheim or whatever it is. And I don't want to say choke, but he would like, he'd get this weird like Conway type of deal that he has. It's the Conway curse, dude. The Conway curse, if you that's what you're calling it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we've had that same conversation. Fuck, man, I would guy. get so fucking pissed at him. It's I'm like, like what's dude, going on? You, yeah. We mm-hmm. go kill it during practice over the week. Like, what are you doing? Just follow me in the, in the practice. Let's fucking get this going, you know? And um, I felt bad, you know, because. I think a lot of it is um, just being in front of the people and practice and the, all the factory guys and just yeah, it, it's a full deal. You got to just kind of stay in your own little zone. Mental game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it is. I yeah. couldn't do it. It's I'd a lot of stress, like, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a lot different than. I mean, we've fucking grown up with them to some degree, and you see them ride at the house or even at the local tracks and crazy crushes it, dude. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them do some sick shit out there, like when. Like back in the day when Evans or Harvey and or you or like someone fast would show up, Adam at a local race would be like, All right, I'm i I'm dumping it. Like I'm I'm showing everything I got. Yeah. And he would win. And you're like, dude, you were fucking laying it over, like you're ripping that shit. And then yeah, he goes like it's cause he's comfy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, it's so dude, moto is such a like comfy sport. Like you're not shit if you're not comfortable on the bike. Like that's right. everything. Yeah, it's like I have it. such bad arm pump all the time, but and it took riding five days a week to be comfortable. Yeah. But then I could rip pretty good back then and not get arm pump and you just flow and like you're one with the machine and you yeah. can just rip and there's like no better feeling. But now like I can even if my shit's working perfect, I'm still not comfortable. <laughs> so I'll just pump up in half a lap and then it's over. I've never experienced that. That's because yeah. you been <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always feel like I'm faster than the last time I rode, so. There you go. Yeah, that's true, that's dude. You can only improve yeah, from here. Yeah, that's, that's, a, a, <laughs> that's a Filipino ground in me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, just always looking to improve. Yeah. What nationality are you? White, dude. 
That's not one. That's a color. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're German, huh? I don't know, man. Tyranny. You know what? They got some Irish in me, my mom said. Irish. She put in a Barbie, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Shrimp on the Barbie? <laughs> they say that, too. Like, <laughs> no. I, Does they say that there? I no, don't think so. Uh -uh. I've seen videos. Australia, dude. There's shrimp I, on the Barbie. Oh, that is. Oh, yeah. It's all good, dude. <laughs> what is Irish? Like, whiskey and stuff? Yeah. Like, Pretty much. Okay. Conor McGregor. Yeah. Okay. McGregor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's Irish. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty much him, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty similar. So what do you think of, like, the the kids now? Like, what do you think of, like, the 450 class now? Have you been watching the Supercross? Yeah. What do you think? It's just gnarly, huh? Oh, dude. It's it's awesome. I get excited to watch every weekend. Yeah. You know? Who's your number one f guy? Like, who you're rooting for every weekend? Um, I, I like Webb. Me too. I like Roxon. Um... I like Webb because I like his attitude, man. He's he's kind of cocky, but he's yeah, I think he's gonna be there in a few years, you know. Or, I don't know. I mean, he just maybe won this a few year. Last, yeah, he just yeah, won yeah, dude, I don't like Webb. He does and like, now he's on my fucking team. He he sucks, he's a KTM <laughs> yeah, I'm a full KTM enthusiast. I got one KTM. You have to get the four foot sticker and like an orange <laughs> pop up, and I got the orange thing on my keys. So now. We fucking got rid of Dungy, who's yeah. arguably the greatest of all time. Oh, yeah. and, oh my God. <laughs> and now they replaced him with Webb, dude. Yeah. And yeah, I don't like Webb only because um, he's a crybaby sometimes. Like when I, uh, I can see that. Yeah. Who, oh, when it. Bowers took him out and he was like, he's like about to cry on the play. He's like, you're a little B word, Bowers. <laughs> I was like, wow, dude. <laughs> if he said bitch, I would have been like, yeah, I've been a Webb fan for life. But yeah. The fact that he said you're a little B word, I'm right. like not into it. And anymore. lately, he's been like, like it's cool, no problem if your religious beliefs. But every time he says, "I want to thank God," like all of them do it's that. Harsh, mm -hmm. dude. It's harsh. I get it. I get it. You know, I'm not gonna bash that. No, but, but it is like. But everyone says it now. Everyone. I I I don't understand that sometimes. Just be like, dude, it's not a hashtag. And that's <laughs> yeah. I, I like the guys that are kind like. Everyone is so molded and robotic. Like I didn't like yeah. Dungey when he was racing because same he was so time. fucking predictable and he says the same shit on the podium yeah. every time. But that's kind of like I definitely respect him and like the grind and the work that he put in to yeah. get there yeah. and everything. But I like the guys that are kind of like out of it. Like a Lawrence, dude. We need a Lawrence back so badly yeah. just to stir shit up. Yeah. But, so anyone that says anything. I'm like, okay, cool. I I don't know. I don't really have a like selected few, you know. Mm -hmm. I kind of like all the guys. I mean, I don't I don't know probably most. I don't know any of them really, you know. We all obviously know who they are, but not personally. Yeah, I mean, I like Pleasanger. I like to mm -hmm. watch him come up. Yeah, he's cool. He's at um, least got some personality to him. Yeah, but I don't know. It's cool just to see a good race for the most part, you for know. Sure. Yeah. Some battling. I like Webb. How you said his attitude. Cause it adds to the next race. You're like, dude. Yeah, but dude. I can see it, like how you said, like mm -hmm. how he sometimes he's kind of a little bitch about stuff, yeah. you know. And like I really didn't like Reed until recently either for the same reason. Yeah. Like yeah. he was always kind of just kinda seemed whiny. about something. Yeah, but well, Reed, pitcher Reed, like notorious for being number two. Yeah, like he's always been yeah. the second guy. Like Villapoto, Carmichael, McGrath, like. Dungy, yeah. everyone's always like past them. But now, like, everyone roots for Reed, everyone including loves myself, him. dude. He's because, like the Larocco, dude. Yeah. Well, dude, how, he was like, Ricky's been retired for what, like 12 years now? Yeah. Or really? something? 07, wasn't that his last year? Something like that? Holy shit, Probably something know. like that. But, dude, damn. Oh, Dungy's still already been gone there. for what, two or three? Yeah, exactly. Four? Crazy. Reed is Reed's, still fucking out there, yeah, dude. Reed's, he's what, 50? <laughs> yeah, he's oh, pushing it, <laughs> pretty yeah. much fuck. yeah so that's fucking sick that he's still out there yeah. and still competitive too like he makes every main and yeah. he's fucking can pull out a top 10 i'm sure but yeah I that's did. crazy maybe i should go back dude you should. You should dude even if i don't make mains i could be 40 making a night show maybe you could be the first aarp sponsored racer <laughs> yeah oh my god government brought me here yeah. <laughs> shout out uncle sam yeah. Yeah. been paying him my whole life dude Fuck. yeah um so 
I love putting JP on the spot. I'll look at him like, oh, do you have a question? And then he's like, oh, fuck, what am I going to say? It's my turn, dude. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even talk- know you guys were taking turns. No, it's um, not. Well, like when he looks at me like that, he, he, he means he's business. pausing. He's like, it looks like you got something to say, so I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to let you say something. And then he knows I don't have to say something. <laughs> I'm just like doing this right now, you know? Yeah. Time. So, well, since we're talking about pro moto guys, we've already talked about this on the show, but so, um, Savachi's our favorite rider or least favorite rider at the same time. Least Be- favorite rider. Yeah. Because, um, but no specific, like, okay. so, so like with, with go to bed, I'll run over it quick. Cause people have already heard, but, um, JP was just randomly trolling on Savachi's page a few months ago, and he just commented, go to bed on one of his photos, and uh-huh. Savachi responded, and he was like, LOL, it's not even 9.30. Like, he didn't get that it was a fucking joke. Like, he <laughs> thought he really meant go to bed. Yeah. So then ever since then, like, we don't have anything against him or anything, but he just made the mistake of replying. Right. So ever since then, every single fucking post that he made – JP would say, go to bed, like get some rest, <laughs> like shouldn't you be sleeping, <laughs> like shit like that. And then he finally fucking blocked him the other day, so now he can't see it. But, what a fucking bitch. Dude. Yeah, yeah so exactly. on our podcast Instagram, uh, at go to bed podcast, we only follow us and Savachi. We follow three. And like we just made the, the intro today, so if you watch on YouTube, you can see the intro, but it's like <laughs> – it's like clips of Savachi fucking crashing. God. And I pause it when he hits the ground and I put Go like, to bed. no, I put our logo and like a sleepy Z. Like, like and there's like a clips. Like, it looks like he's fucking sleeping out there. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, like, Get him on the show, dude. Dude, we want to. That's our yeah. goal. I think I'm going to Oakland this weekend with Sam. So I'm going to get a, some guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wait in that autograph line for him and have him sign, sign it. Go to bed. Go to at the end. I'll say two JP. Can you put two JP films? Do you think he's gonna know who you are? He'll know, dude. (laughs) He blocked me. He had to go to my page. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. Can you put JP on there? And he's like, sure. And then he like hands it back. Oh, can you put go to bed on there? And then it'll click. It'll be like, oh motherfucker. (laughs) I hope he's. I actually I don't care what type of mood he's in, but it's just gonna be awesome because I have to film it. Like, can't wait. And then after that. I'm going to see on his mood if he's upset. I probably won't ask him to be on the podcast. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to be like, explain, like, look, dude, like, it's all because you replied, blah, blah, blah. But if he is in a good mood, then I'm like, you know what? You'll be great as a guest on our, like, yeah. like, honestly, I'll save up the money for your plane ticket. I know you're not rich or anything, but he, <laughs> you know he is. And, oh, like, yeah. We tried to call him one day because he fucking yeah. posted his Corvette for sale on his Instagram. It was a link to an auto trader. Okay. And we'd seen him in the car before. We're like, dude, that's his fucking car. So then there was a number on the ad. So we called it. We were filming because we were going to prank call him. Yeah. And then he didn't answer. It went to voicemail. We're like, fuck. And we called him back a couple weeks later and same thing. He didn't answer. It's probably he knew like I put this on my thing and my fans might call. So I'm not going to answer anything. Yeah, he's that. probably oh, like he's screening probably calls and shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was pretty funny. But yeah, so he's one of our favorite slash least favorite riders. And then I'd say my other least favorite for no reason is Tomac. Um, that's, and that's good, dude. My that's, wife loves Tomac. Really? Well, that's why I don't like him because JP and Neil fucking love Tomac, dude. They're I love him. Tomac he's a, he's dick a gnarly guy. He's oh, yeah. fast. He's yeah. always there. Oh, yeah. But I just, I like him, but I hate on him just to get my wife going. Yeah, right. that's part. exactly, dude. And last season was perfect because right at the beginning of the season, they're all about him. I'm like, dude, this guy fucking sucks. And he like DNFs the first round or whatever he did. <laughs> and then every, he was just choking over and over. No, I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy fucking choke Mac, dude. Yeah, he can't yeah. handle the pressure. We fucking, I call him hematomy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always fucking like, hematomy ain't going to do shit. Dude, dude, he needs that butt, butt patch, dude. Yeah. Hematomy. Yeah, I like the guys that show some of their cash too, like Roxon and, and Barsha. They're rolling Same. around in the fucking R eights and, and shit. Like Tomac, he's just boring, dude. He just yeah. goes and buys more property and fucking twelve more pairs of Wranglers and that's yeah. it. He does like, dude, live a little. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Fuck, like man. Like it's just all gonna end someday. Yeah. To people like me and Feeks, maybe you if you, if I see like someone from here doing photo and video and they bought a brand new like truck or something sick, I'm like, yo, I 
I'm not there. I need to work harder. Mm -hmm. And some people go, fuck that person. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, I could see why they don't, but at the same time, I wish they would. Because for me, I'm like, I could do it too. They're doing it. I could do it. Like, there's proof. Yeah, can do it. Yeah. Even though, like, for me, like, you got to see it to, like, for some people, you got to see it to believe it. But, like, dude, post more of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Barsha's like that, dude. I heard he's stupid. I was talking to someone the other day and, he just buys all kinds of cool shit. Yeah. Oh, like he seems badass stupid. cars and Sick, yeah. Dude. So you know he's making money. Dude, yeah. he was like I don't know if he still is, but remember they did that sort of like little documentary on him and he had his property and then he had this like big metal building that was like 90% garage and then he had like a studio apartment in the back of it. And that's where he lived. So he pretty much uh-huh. lived in this garage that was full of fucking his cool cars, shit. bikes, <clears throat> his boat, all this cool shit. And then a tiny little apartment. Yeah. And then it was on all this property where he had the tracks and shit. Right. I was like, damn, that's sick. Especially yeah. when you're young and single and all you do is ride anyway. Like, yeah, fucking mine as well. Sick. And like yeah. Stuart, dude, that's why he was my favorite rider too. He's fucking bomb, oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. hundred acre ranch and just Dumb fucking three house. houses on yeah. it and Lambos, Ferraris, all this shit. And yeah. I'm sure all those guys hated his ass. Oh, yeah. You know they did. Dude, I was watching episode one of Bubba's World yesterday on YouTube. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. This is <laughs> sick. What's, who's Ezra Lusk or who? who no. Who's Ezra the guy? Lusk, dude. That's old school. Yeah. Who? Yeah, is that his buddy who... Hangs with him, Sorby, Eric Sorby. Sorby, yeah, oh, Sorby. yeah, yeah, dude, he's funny too because he's like a dummy on this show, you know. Yeah, but that was a sick show. Fuck, yeah. dude, if I had unlimited cash, I'd start a team, and my only two riders would be Stewart and Lawrence. That's it, <laughs> <laughs> twenty million a year, and I don't give a fuck if you make the main. Like, I just want you guys to show up. Yeah, yeah please just come just back. Fucking- yeah. You don't have to win. Like yeah. you you cannot sign autographs if you don't want to. Like, like just show make up. the main. Lawrence, take out as many fucking guys as you can right. during practice. And Stuart, you just crank whip. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. Hit the wolf. Just go and jump whips. like stupid shit one time in the heat and like that's it. Pull off. I don't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sick, dude. Fuck, man. Fuck yeah. All right, we'll probably start wrapping it up here since we're, I think we're at like an hour or so, roughly. Yeah, we'll so. try to keep it at an hour. But yeah, thanks for coming, Nate. <laughs> no yeah, problem, man. Thank hopefully, you. Hopefully good to talk moto. It sounds good. We need to get some more mics in here and have like a big fucking local moto show. We'll have like Lane and like a be cool. Mason, dude. Oh, That'd be sick to have yeah. everyone just come Those in guys and talk would all shit. Come. Yeah, yeah all come for we sure. Where's Tommy mics. Jean? We need him, dude. Oh, dude, tattooing. Is he? I yeah. see it. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. fucking tattooing. There's your guy. I'm not going to him. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Tommy, but oh, fuck. you can't trust a moto dude with a gun. Fuck dude. no. Look at Hart. Look at Metzger. It's all bad news. Yep. But I'll I'll, I'll trust a prisony. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> what a prisony? Isn't that what you call someone who's in prison? Prisoner. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. You're right. <laughs> you need to get some rest. Uh, yeah. Go to bed, dude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. If you want to support the podcast, go to go to bedpodcast.com and we have the uh, PayPal link set up there for one time spare change donations and also our Patreon set up. And uh, the top tier of our Patreon is. Is uh, for fifteen thousand dollars a month. You can <laughs> donate that, and JP will get go to bed tattooed on the side of his head. Yes. So we're still waiting oh, for one, like, and that's limited to yeah. one spot. And that's, so that's facts dude, you too. Like, to be careful. Someone might do that. I uh, we're waiting. That's we're why open. I did it. <laughs> Where's Sam at, dude? Yeah. Sam will do that shit. He was just on. He. I mean, he didn't seem too interested in it. But, see, okay. but you never you know. know. <laughs> he might that get could a be crazy a tactic. Hair. There you he, go. He could be like, that's a that's a sick deal. Like I'd see, I'd see that and. Keep in mind, it'd be the logo. So if anyone's listening, go look at the logo, and every letter has flames on the back end of the letter <laughs> for going to bed. Yeah, we chose the worst fucking font yeah. we could find. <laughs> I'll put that on my head forever. I might grow my hair out after, but I'd do it. If you're you listening know. on YouTube, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on the podcast app, uh, go ahead and subscribe and rate the podcast because I guess that helps. Five star. Uh, we got merch on our website. Go to bedpodcast.com. Uh, we got pillows, blankets, all your sleeping I don't needs. Want a fucking pillow, dude. Yeah, dude. Buy one, dude. No go to one bedpodcast.com. Has bought one? I don't know. We should probably check. Oh uh, well, actually, no uh, one's because no, it hasn't dropped yet. Yeah, but. So. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, what else do we got? Um, that's about it. At Go to Bed Podcast on Instagram. I think that will about wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, count your blessings and your sheep, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Rock, man, you guys are cool. <laughs> cut that check, cut that check, cut that check, cut that check. I need my check, I need my check, I need my check, I need my check.